The following video is sponsored by InstantMaddenCoins.com. The only place to get Madden Coins instantly on every console and platform is InstantMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back with another Madden 17 episode of my budget series. And guys, today what we're going to be taking a look at is the defensive tackle position. And guys, the budget that we're staying under is right around 10,000 coins. You might have to go just slightly above that on a couple of these guys if you don't find them for the price. But by and large, most of these guys you're going to be able to find for under 10,000 coins. And I think that they're going to do a pretty damn good job for most of your Madden Ultimate Team teams. So just try to keep in mind, guys, obviously, the guys that we're going to be showing that are the budget cards are not necessarily bud better players than the actual, like, high-end player that we're going to show in a comparison. But what we're trying to do here, guys, is just kind of give you an idea of, you know, what you could get if you spent more and just kind of the quality that you can get by just taking a look at some of the attributes with these cards versus just looking at just the overall attribute alone by itself. So with that said, guys, let's hop into it. We're going to take a look at the first comparison. On the left side of your screen, you're going to see Fletcher Cox, and Fletcher Cox is going for about 10,000 coins. Like I said, right around there, you might have to go to 11,000 or something, but 10,000 coins. And on the right side of the screen, we have the Color Rush Gerald McCoy, which is going for 55,000-ish coins right now. So, guys, what we want to do here is we want to show kind of highlighting the pass rushing attributes of these two different cards. Now, obviously, Gerald McCoy is the more balanced card. He's higher overall. He's more expensive, everything like that. But what I want to say is that if you're looking for somebody who's purely a high-end pass rusher, Fletcher Cox might actually be the better option. Now, Fletcher Cox is actually a little bit faster than Gerald McCoy. He has 78 speed along with 83 acceleration. So once he does get past the offensive line, he's going to get to the quarterback a little bit faster. But if you take a look at his power move and his finesse move, yes, his finesse move is six lower than McCoy's. And a 79 overall, though, for that attribute isn't particularly great anyway for McCoy. Typically, you're going to see McCoy and Fletcher Cox both kind of default themselves to the power move. And in that case, Gerald McCoy is only, actually only one higher. And the block shedding on these two cards is very, very similar as well. But Fletcher Cox is actually a little bit better. He's an 86. Where you're going to see the biggest disadvantage for a Fletcher Cox is against the run. Uh, yes, his block shedding is higher, but his strength is quite a bit lower. His hit power is way lower. He's only a 68. That is pretty bad for a defensive tackle. So I don't really worry too much, though, about defensive tackles getting hits on uh, running backs. Typically, you're not going to force fumbles or anything like that with your defensive tackles anyway. So that's not too big of a concern. But again, he is a little bit lower in some of these attributes. His awareness is slightly lower. His play rec is slightly lower. He does have a little bit better pursuit. But overall, these two cards are actually pretty darn similar to one another other than the hit power and the strength. Other than that, and, and actually also, of course, Fletcher Cox being faster. So to me, I think it's really dependent on what you want to do with your defensive tackles. Uh, Fletcher Cox, again, in my opinion, is a better pass rusher. McCoy is probably a little bit more balanced. But overall, again, they're probably going to play, for the most part, pretty similar to one another on a play-to-play -play basis. So when you're talking about a 10,000 coin to a 55,000 coin difference, you might want to try out Fletcher Cox. I think he's a pretty good option for most people for their ultimate teams. Moving on from there, we're going to try out another pass rushing defensive tackle, and that on the left is Football Outsiders Malik Collins. He's an 84 overall. We're going to compare him to an 89 overall Most Feared in Damakong Sue. Now, obviously, the Most Feared cards are a little more expensive because they're rare, but still, Sue is an 115,000 coin card, and when you actually look at the pass rushing... I don't think he's worth that much. Now, again, Sue is going to be better just like Gerald McCoy was across the board. He's definitely better with his 94 strength versus Collins only being an 83 strength. So he's going to do better against the run. But you look at the speed difference. You look at the finesse move. Uh, and, and then obviously, too, you look at some of the other things like the tackling and the pursuit. Malik Collins is actually a little bit better in some of those attributes. Kind of interesting. I definitely don't think there's a big enough difference, especially if you're just talking about pass rushing, between Malik Collins and Adamakong Su to justify that big of a gap between the two of them. And to be honest with you, aside from the 80, 83 strength, 
which unfortunately we still haven't really had much testing to decide exactly how much strength plays into run support. Uh, but aside from that, these guys are really quite similar to one another in most of the attributes. I don't think there's a huge difference one way or another, other than of course that Sue is going to be a power move guy and Collins is going to be a finesse move guy. But you know, for the most part, I think that these guys are probably going to play pretty similar to, to one another for most people. And I just don't think there's a, a, a difference that would justify that huge of a price difference. So again, 7,000 coins for Collins, I think is a really, really good buy. And not to mention guys, if you actually look at their salary cap difference, you're talking about a decent size like a, a five uh, salary difference between these guys too so you know you can save some coins there if you're looking to uh, build up a salary cap team and especially again if you're in usually against opposing teams that like to pass and Malik Collins might actually be the better player for you so let's move on now and let's talk about guys who are more specifically run defenders and on the left side of your screen we have Dan Williams he is a pretty damn good defensive tackle we're not going to say that he's better, though, than the guy on the right, and that is, of course, Haloti Nada. This is a limited-time flashback card, and I chose this one because it's such a high overall card, but honestly, the Dan Williams is pretty damn beastly against the run. There's not a huge difference between these guys. Obviously, Haloti Nada is a better overall defensive tackle. Again, he's got a little bit, he's got quite a bit higher in speed and acceleration if you can, if you add up the two. And then of course his pass rushing, his power move is nine higher and his finesse move is 12 higher. But again, these are situational players. Okay. If you're in a situation where it's, let's say third and two or something like that, fourth and one, you probably want to have a guy like this on the field versus a guy that's a pass rushing defensive tackle. So it's good to have this guy on your roster and be able to sub him in and out as need be. And I think Dan Williams is kind of the ideal guy to do that with along the defensive line because you look at the 92 strength and the 92 block shedding along with 91 tackling. Those attributes are all really, really high. Now he is a little bit lower in play recognition, pursuit, hit power, whatever. Run support, the most important thing is block shedding, and Dan Williams is going to do a great job of that. So I really like this card, especially for 7,000 coins. I think it's a great, great value, and it's unlikely that you're going to find very many guys who are better at run support than Dan Williams for under 10,000 coins or even remotely close to 10,000 coins, to be honest with you. Another guy who is pretty damn good, though, against the run is Marcel Darius. Now, Marcel Darius is a guy who, if you've been watching the budget series over the past couple of years, you've seen him show up time and time again. And I don't know if it's just because EA really likes him or if he's just underrated or I, I don't know exactly what the deal is. But basically, Marcel Darius always goes for a super, super cheap amount of coins. And he is in this game as well. He's going for about 4,000 coins right now at the time of this video being made. And on the right side of your screen, you have a Don Terry Poe, which is an 87 overall defensive tackle. And he's going for about 70,000 coins. So there's a huge price gap between these guys as well. But if you actually take a look at the attributes there's not that big of a difference. Now, Marcel Darius is only actually higher than Don Terry Poe in one attribute, which is tackling. He's four higher, but he's exactly the same in a lot of other attributes. Power move, they're exactly the same. Hit power, exactly the same. Pursuit, exactly the same. And they're almost identical in block shedding and strength as well. And if you go up and you even look at their finesse move and, and everything on the top row there, speed and acceleration, they're quite similar in all of those attributes as well. Don Terry Poe's, uh, you know, he's an upgrade from Marcel Darius for sure because he's one or two higher in just about everything. But the price gap between these cards is absolutely huge. So if you like the signature Don Terry Poe and you don't have the 70,000 coins to spend, you can try out a Marcel Darius because he's basically the same exact that card just slightly worse in most of the attributes so i wanted to show you guys that one as well now that is going to do it for this video guys i want to hear from you guys though though are there other defensive tackles that you guys particularly like do you like maybe taking any defensive ends and placing them at defensive tackle has that been working out for you let me know in the comment section below and maybe give some suggestions to other people as far as specific cards that you might particularly like 
Also, I want to hear from you guys as well if there are any positions that you want me to focus on specifically. We've done a lot of the offense. We've done a lot of the defense. Um, but I do also maybe want to venture into potentially some of the more gimmicky type positions like user control players and things like that in the secondary because I know a lot of people like to do that. So maybe at some point we'll focus on something like that. But I want to hear from you guys. Are there any specific positions that you want me to take a look at? Also, if you want me to take a look at salary cap specifically, I would be glad to do that as well because I think there are some gems even that EA themselves missed out on when they were actually analyzing and putting a salary cap price on these cards. I think a lot of people, uh, maybe they just aren't agreeing with me on what's most important. I mean, obviously they created the game, but sometimes they put things like awareness way too high and then it ends up kind of inflating the attributes and uh, and making those guys overpriced. So let me know in the comment section below, guys, what you want to see next here on the budget series. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do me a favor, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.